Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Well, another crazy week in this country. We used to say it was Donald Trump's fault. Now the whole world is screwed up. Uh, we're back to normal. We are back to normal. We are back to pre-Trump. Problems all over the world, problems in the country. But I want to say something to you. They're normal problems, and they'll all work out at some point, somehow. We don't have an erratic leader. Now, I have a lot of things to cover tonight. A lot a lot has been happening. And we're going to go traveling in quite, to, for quite a few places, like Washington, D.C., Arizona, Rhode Island, the Ukraine, Germany, New York City, the Saudi Arabian Desert, Virginia, Czechoslovakia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and San Francisco. I want to start tonight with the oath, with the oath that every federal employee, this includes Congress, senators, but every federal employee in every agency, et cetera, et cetera, and members of the U.S. Army take, and this is their obligation. And the oath is, I do solemnly swear I will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I repeat, I do solemnly swear, I will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, a lot of people are forgetting this today. (laughs) A lot of them. It, It even runs into the halls of Congress. Ted Cruz, Hawley. Uh, Ron Peterson, Uh, think of the senators that are arbitrary, capricious, and don't care about Biden. They're still with Trump, and they're going to take over this country, and we're going to go into some kind of an autocratic-type government. And then you've got in the the Congress, you've got uh, Jim Jordan, Gates, et cetera. cetera. They're all crazy, but uh, they forget their oath. They all took this oath. And what about the members of the Army, the members of the military, who have now, they're out of the service, and they've joined these anti-democracy groups like Quonan and so forth. Uh, They just, uh, they uh, believe that uh, they've been trained to do what they're doing, and they believe their country is at risk. They got sold a bill of goods since about 19, since about 20... 16, maybe 2015 it started, but Trump really solidified the garbage that was being fed them. And I'm going to share something with you for the moment or right now. Um, I have been reading recently that there's a lot of money behind the terrorists, the terrorist groups, the dissidents. Uh, there, we knew that, but there's a lot, a lot of money. It comes from the one percent of pe- people, the money with people with all the dough, the big dough. I don't know why they want to run this country. They're running successful businesses. They're filthy rich. Who wants the aggravation of running a country? Want to cut their taxes? Already, they're not paying taxes. I don't see the value see the value in this. But maybe they want to sit at the table with Putin. I don't know. Uh, it does not make sense to me. Anyhow. Uh, these people are financially supporting the terrorist groups. But besides that, you notice all kinds of bad things keep coming up. Stories about who's doing what and it's bad. And it, it, after a while you think, my God, the Democrats are totally screwed up. Look at all the horrible things they're doing. And people, people, people who don't belong to these groups say, I've got to be against the Democrats. They are screwing up the country, and these people on the other side, the far-right Republicans, they're trying to save the country, my country. Let me share with you a fact you may not be aware of. On January 6th, thousands of people, the Capitol was invaded, the Capitol was attacked, they attended the meeting with Trump beforehand. Do you know? The numbers came out, I think, about two weeks ago, that 80% of the people there were ordinary American citizens who did not belong to any of these groups, uh, such as Quainan and everybody else. They were there because their president said, my election was stolen. 
come help me come to Washington on January 6th. I'll be there. And they came, 80%. A four-fifths of the people there, that mob attacking the Capitol, were just ordinary American citizens who came to Washington because their president told them to come and do something. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, so we got a lot of bad people. They took the oath. They don't pay any attention to the oath. Can't understand it. You can't run a government. You can't run a business. You can't run anything without rules that people follow. Now, Texas, they want to CC. That's horrible. I mean, they, they're secessionists. Uh, they're bad people. Right now, that means that they're, they're, they're domestic enemies of our country. They want to take, they want to divide the country, take their Texas, their big state of Texas, and rip it away from the United States and be independent. There's big time talk of Texas seceding. They're serious about it there, down there. Look at all these stupid laws they passed. They're right now on the books, and they're going to affect the next election. They'll get turned around in due course, but it's going to be a tough job because these people got sold a bill of goods someplace. Well, here's what's going to happen. Number one, Antoine Scalia, the Republican uh, Supreme Court Justice, ultra-conservative, far to the right. He died a couple of years ago. Very well-respected, though. Now, I, I admit I'm a liberal. I admit that, uh, but I believe in that. government uh, is, a, is an operation of laws. We live by the laws. Scalia was probably the smartest justice ever to sit on the Supreme Court. He, I'm going to say it. Even though we disagree philosophically, we had disagreed many times philosophically. Uh, his mind was fantastic the way it operated. And, and as a student of law, I was so impressed how he could take this and that, and boom, he had this theory, and it looked good. Uh, he said this, you know, about secession. He said back in 2006, and I quote, if there was any constitutional issue resolved, by the Civil War, I repeat, if there was any constitutional issue resolved by the Civil War, it is that there is no right to CC. Now let's move on for a moment. Let's assume Texas secedes. Uh, they're out. We've given up on them. They now are an independent country. Texas, aren't they happy? Okay. Now comes Russia, Putin. Putin loves to aggravate, especially the, the great country of the United States, the great democracy. He hates us. He hates us. No question about it. Uh, he decides he's going to embarrass us further. He wants to get the, his feet, both feet, onto former United States territory. So he goes to the, head, the president or prime minister or whatever he is in Mexico, and over a short period of time, not long, he persuades him to become his friend, not the friend any longer of the United States. Certain economic advantages are involved, trade and so forth. And now he's got a power base in our continent, in the North American continent, in Mexico. And what does he do? He brings 100,000 Russian troops, think of the Ukraine, and he plants them in Mexico ready to cross the Rio Grande into Texas. They're going to invade and take over Texas. Uh, now, what are the Texans going to do? I ask you, they're in worse shape than the Ukraine when it comes to defending themselves. All right? And they ain't ever going to have 100,000 troops to put up to oppose the Russians if that should occur. And they're going to be sitting on their asses saying, oh, my God, what do I do? The United States may or may not help to bail them out. I wouldn't. I'd let them suffer. Uh, and that'll be it. They, uh, because Santa Claus won't even be able to help them. They will be all alone because they thought the best way to handle things at one point in time was to CC. I want to talk to you swiftly about the, one of the lawyers who represented Donald Trump. I'm talking about John Eastman. Uh, he's got problems big time. I would assume he's going to get indicted down the road. Uh, he's already appeared before the January 6th committee. Uh, this is the lawyer, okay, who drew up this plan uh, to legally, quote, unquote, 
turn over the government to Trump following the election. The election was invalid. Mike Pence had to get up on January 6th and say, I don't certify uh, these numbers. And if Pence didn't do that, uh, Biden wouldn't be president. It's part of the format we have to follow. It's part of the law. And Pence refused to do it. He saw the foolishness in it, the, the wrongness in, in it. And he covered his ass well, and he refused to do it. Now, okay, uh, what they did preparatory to, and assuming that Pence, though, was going to say, I don't certify this. And if he didn't certify it on January 6th, Biden wasn't president. I repeat it again. So what did they do? They went to six states. And they had the electors in those states, a group of their own electors, because they knew the electors had already voted for Biden. They were going to fire these electors. I don't know, secretary, somebody was going to in there. And they were going to submit a new slate of electors. These electors weren't really electors. Nobody appointed them. Nobody elected them to be electors in the state to elect the the president of the United States per our system. And uh, they were going to... uh, their names went in, and they would be substituted under Eastman's plan for the first set of electors that had been thrown out by the Trump people now. Well, that, there's no law, basis in law for this, okay? Absolutely wrong. These people weren't elected. Right now, even today, the Department of Justice announced they were investigating these electoral plans set forth by Eastman, all right? Well, why am I telling you all this? Because John Eastman testified recently before the January 6th uh, committee. And guess what? He took the Fifth Amendment 146 times. He took the Fifth Amendment 146 times. I'm a lawyer. I believe in the right of the Fifth Amendment. I refuse to answer on the grounds that my answer might tend to incriminate me. How many clients have I had that said, you got to say this? How are you going to jail? Uh, You're going to convict yourself. Anyhow, 146 times. Do you remember when Trump in 2016 was in the running in the primary? He said during one of the debates, he said, people who take the Fifth Amendment, do you know why they take it? Because they're guilty. Well, here's one of his lawyers. He took it 146 times. Ah. Yesterday, or late last week, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, you know who he is. He's the podcaster from out on the West Coast, I think, California. Very big, very big, huge following in the millions uh, to the far right Republican. Uh, His ass is kissed, too, by people who want to run for major office in this country. Uh, He spoke to, uh, he went before the committee. And do you know how many times he took the Fifth Amendment? He took it a hundred times. These are supporters of Donald Trump. They're going to testify because the committee is trying to see what caused this insurrection, who was behind it. And, of course, he took the Fifth. I think he he might have been behind it. I don't know. But I'm sure he knew what what was going on. All right? Uh, It's terrible. 156 times. A hundred times. Let me talk to you about Arizona Democrats swiftly. Uh, Kristen Sinema is a United States Senator, Democrat, elected from the state of Arizona. You know what she's been doing with Joe Manchin. Uh, it's, that sounds terrible. You know that she and Joe Manchin are of the same uh, mentality political-wise, philosophically. Uh, and the Arizona Democrats were very unhappy with her when, because of her vote on the filibuster. Uh, they felt that her filibuster vote, because her and Manchin's precluded the Democrats from carrying the day, helped sink Democratic Party's voting rights legislation. They knew that Arizona Democrats know that black people are, being, are going to be screwed, Latinos are going to be screwed with these new rules that have come down. And they're against her, they're upset with her, so they censured her. We don't want you in our party. They can't throw her up, but they censured her. You're a bad girl. It won't mean anything. It just doesn't sound right to censure, all right? Uh, but the rift, she's had problems in the last year also with 
her fellow Democrats who supported and electric, elected her. And the reason there's problems is because she promised all these things when she ran, and she's doing everything the Republican way and not the Democratic way that got her elected. All right? So uh, the rift, she has a rift. There's a chasm between her and organized Democrats in Arizona, and she's going to get a primary when her time comes for re-election. Can she survive it? I don't know yet, but that's what's coming, aggravation for her, and she deserves it. Rudy Giuliani and Michael Flynn, <coughs> excuse me, uh, birds of a feather. You know, I, I feel sorry for Rudy Giuliani. I really do. Great man, great prosecutor, went after the mafia, tried cases himself, broke the back of the mafia in New York City. Uh, and who can argue with what, what he did on 9-11? Uh, he was the mayor of the world. Everyone respected him. And he made a ton of money afterwards doing various things as a lawyer. And uh, now he's he's a loser. He's a nothing. He's going down. I mean, he is going down big time. And Michael Flynn's been a whore all the time. How he became a general in the Army, I don't know. But uh, he had to get pardoned by Trump. And here's what happened with these two guys. The University of Rhode Island gave each of them, awarded each of them, an honorary degree. Rudy Giuliani in 2003 and Michael Flynn in 2014. Friday, the Board of Trustees of the Rhode Island University, okay, voted to revoke the honorary degrees that these two men received. Mark Parlange is the president of Rhode Island University, and he said following the vote regarding Giuliani and Trump, they, and I quote, no longer represent the values and standards they demonstrated when they first received the honors. When they first received the honors. And it's true, absolutely true. I mean, these men, especially Giuliani, he's going down, down, down. This man's utterly destroyed and finished for life. Uh, moving on. Drums of war. Drums of war. Are there drums of war today over there in Ukraine? The Russians, uh, NATO, the United States. Uh, they're clamoring again. And it's always Russia, Russia, Russia. It brings on the... Uh, is the primary offender when it comes to drums of war. Well, they're beating again, my friends. We all know it. Reasons for concern. Uh, you know, what does he do, Putin? He wants the Ukraine. So he puts 100,000 troops on the border. Got to scare the hell out of the Ukraine, which scared the hell out of any country. He's now up the ante to 127,000 troops he's got on the border, plus all the equipment that goes with it. He's covering them on three sides and moving right now to be on all four sides of the Ukraine. So he's just going to, if he comes in, he comes right into the middle, leaves nothing. And the Ukraine can give him a fight this time. The last time he pulled something there, uh, they couldn't. But they're ready. But I don't know if they're ready for 127,000 troops. Now, NATO, so far, is standing behind the Ukraine, and NATO should. And as the United States... Though we have nothing to do with them, nothing to do with Ukraine. We are a member of NATO, and other countries are going to be at war with Putin if he continues this with Russia. So, And we're, we have to support. Anyone in NATO has to support everybody else if they go to war. Uh, Biden told us uh, yesterday he, he has put the U.S. Army and our troops on high alert, which means he has told 85,000 American troops, be ready to go. Get your stuff together. Get your rifles cleaned up. You'll be taken off on short notice. Uh, he is in the process of ordering a carrier and some warships, uh, more warships, uh, over to the Ukraine uh, for a battle should one occur. Now, let me give you an example. I want to tie this in if I can. I mentioned this briefly at the beginning of the show tonight. All these people with the money, a lot of them are supporting uh, shows like Fox and so forth. And people to go out and say, the United States is bad because he's doing this. Well, Tucker, Tucker Carlson started last night. And today, a 
Republican uh, uh, congressman issued a statement similar to what Tucker Carlson was talking about last night. I don't recall the congressman's name. I apologize. But Tucker Carlson said, why is the United States getting involved with the Ukraine? What does the Ukraine do for us? What can the Ukraine do for us? All right. We don't need to go to war to help the Ukraine. And he's on this kick. So now here's a fellow who's probably got 20 million people who listen to him five nights a week. And he's spreading this dirt and saying we can't help this country. And he knows why we have to help because of the NATO relationships and everything else. You must be true to your word. All right. And he's saying, doesn't make sense to me. And the Republican congressman today said, why are we going to war? May we go to war with, with, with Russia? What have we got to do with the Ukraine? All right? So that's how all this crap, if you'll excuse me, gets started. The Dow. I am so worried about the market, I want to tell you. Yesterday, if you, if you noticed, the market was down 1,000 points, more than 1,000 points at some point, at some time during the day. Now, that's a big drop in one day. I'm smiling as I say this. But within minutes of the closing time, we're talking less than five minutes, three major corporations in the United States made necessary transactions. So the market came back. Okay, and it ended up, I, I, I forget, it ended up uh, something like 120 points to the 99%, 99 points to the good, or 120%, but it never happened before that way. In one day, down more than 1,000, comes back and ends up on the positive side, uh, which is interesting because why did these companies, by the way, manipulate their stocks, which is properly legal proper and proper in its own uh, way. Why do they do this? Because somebody in the White House has to say the president wants you, or maybe the president called, you got to buy some stock. We can't let the market crash today. This would be horrible. Well, I said, yes, I said in my blog this morning, I wrote, this is not healthy because what's going to happen, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. And at some point, it ain't going to come back. And, boy, are we going to be in deep shit trouble. I didn't use that terminology, and I apologize now, but that's it. We're going to be in deep shit trouble. So what happened today? Hey, it happened all over again. It wasn't 1,000 points. It was 800 points today. Uh, no, 900. I'm sorry, 800, 800. It was 800 points. The market at some point was down 800 points. Shades of yesterday, catastrophe coming. And again, at the last minute, last two or three minutes of trading, some money came in and brought it up in the positive side. I don't know, it's 120 uh, points to the good or something like that. Uh, we can't survive that way with our economy. I mean, that's instability. <laughs> and if that market crashes, we're going to be in trouble for a long time because we're showing instability big time, all right? Uh, you can't run a banking business, a money business, a stock business on this kind of, of trading. Why, are, why is this happening? Okay, well, they say that businesses are fear that the Federal Reserve is going to raise the rates because of inflation. Could happen, will probably happen. I doubt it will even be a point. But they, if they, we're still, the price of food and everything else is going up, up, up. They're going to have to do this to help bring the cost of goods down. Uh, but the bankers, investors, et cetera, are worried about that. And they also have a fear of this Russian-Ukraine conflict because any war would affect the market big time. N95 masks. You know, these people sit back in this country Half of the people in this country don't want to wear a mask. Half of the people in this country don't believe we have COVID. Uh, half of the people in this country uh, don't, want to, don't want to protect themselves or anyone else. I, I don't understand. And in the meantime, free of charge, at no cost to every citizen, every person living in this country, you're getting free vaccine shots. You don't pay for those. They've always, they've been free. You go to the drugstore, supermarket, and you get hit. Now, or last week, uh, Biden announced that testing kits were available free to anyone that wanted them. 
just go to the Internet, put in your information. They wanted my email address. That's all. And they were going to send me two containers or boxes of testing kits, which I should receive in about seven days. Free! Now, the CDC says we want everybody to use the N95 or the KN95 masks. They're the best. We don't want cloth used anymore because the, the N95 is more solid and there's less chance to, of a germ permeating the cloth because it's sort of like leather but isn't leather. Right? So, And we're getting those for free. Uh, it, it was announced a couple of days ago that he's putting out millions of these, Biden, and they're going to be available to everyone in this country and Already in the Middle East, they're available. You're going to get them at the drugstores and the supermarkets. We're told that in Key West, Friday or Saturday, Walgreens, CVS, and Winn-Dixie are going to have packages of three free N95 masks. Let me tell you something. N95 masks are not cheap because about a month ago I bought a slew of them. They are not cheap. We're getting them for free, the people in this country, three of them. Uh, and people are complaining. The government's doing everything to save our asses. <coughs> Not because they want to save their own, but this is their obligation to preserve and protect the people of the United States. And yet people complain. You know, even those that don't want it, they complain. Your government is not charging you for any of this. Take it, smile, and be happy. Okay, it's happening. Robots have taken over the world, and they've been used in the last few years in professional baseball in the minor leagues as umpires calling balls and strikes. I'm smiling, but it's, that's what's happening. And this year they have been moved up. They will be in the Triple A League. That's the highest you can be before you go to the majors. And they'll be used as umpires, all right? And some people already I've read, they're laughing. You know, you're going to have robots calling balls and strikes. Well, hell, for the last several years, doctors have been using robots to perform operations on the brain, on the stomach, on the kidneys, on your heart. Robots! And they're, they're wondering, can they call balls and strikes? Uh, it's, it's happening. It's, I think it's amusing. It's happening and it probably works. It has been working, and they wouldn't be moving moving people, the robots up. It snowed in Saudi Arabia last week in the desert. It never snows in Saudi Arabia in the desert. It has a couple of times in the last couple of hundred years, but it's a rare occasion. This snow covered a huge area, and it didn't melt the next day when the sun came out. It stayed until the day after before it started melting. At the same time, at the same time, the poor Saudi Arabian desert had a hailstorm. Hailstorm. I don't know if they ever had a hailstorm. Nobody can find records showing that the desert ever had a hailstorm. The experts, the weather experts, are describing it as an historic event. So, I don't know if nobody said global change on this. I'm not saying it, but it's an unusual event to have occurred. Uh, be happy, my friends. Be proud. We're not, we've now found out that uh, the heart of a pig, the kidneys of a pig can be used, and the body will not reject them when put into a human body. There have been two operations in the last 10 days where the body has not rejected uh, the pig transplant. That's the show for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I really I love doing this show. I keep saying that every week. I have fun putting it together. I have fun deciding what I'm going to talk about. I have fun with your, your, your reactions and your comments. Not everyone agrees with me, but that's all right. At least they're listening. Like those who read my blog, if they comment in the negative, at least they're reading the blog. And uh, I'm just thrilled with it. My numbers keep going up they, every week, a little bit more. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining me again. Please stay safe. And good night.